Suppose someone asks you, what kind of kids will I have? Uh, I've gotten that question before, kind of historically, and uh, it, it seems like one of those things that, I mean, come on, d does astrology really tell you what kind of kids you're going to have? No, it does not. Um, but like everything else in astrology, it will tell you what the heavier potentials are for your kids. Now, before I tell you about asteroid number 28376, Atif Javed, uh, I kind of need to explain something which I've been finding in my research. Lately, I've been studying astrological twins, basically. Same birthday. Doesn't mean you're actual twins. It just means you got the same birth chart or more or less the same birth chart. And a key question is, when I have the same chart and three different people, three different experiences, how can I know one, what that chart is supposed to tell me, but two, the, what the differences are in these people's experiences versus, you know, folks with another chart. Like, how do I know? So, so um, I have all these charts in my collection. I have something like 70,000 charts and um, 45,000 of them are people. In there, there are two other people who have the same birthday as I do. And we look different, and we've had different um, different kind of life experiences, but there are some things that are the same. Uh, the jaw structure that we have, something about the nose, and something about the career. Now, truthfully, the full difference between our charts is not actually in our chart because you could just as well have had a book or a car come off the conveyor belt um, with the same astrological chart as you have. The difference is in what I call species template and synastries. They both do essentially the same thing. The species template is, is my kind of hypothetical... Uh, array of planets and asteroids that are pronounced in your species. So for example, the asteroid of wheels is going to be really important for cars born on your birth date, but it's going to be dialed down and worth almost nothing um, in the wheel sense in your chart. So when we look at a chart, we kind of have to know what it is. Is this, is this the birth of a book or is this a birth of a person? Similarly, we have to know is this the birth of a Smith or the birth chart of a Jones? Um, because they have genetic things. They have stuff that was passed down from their parents. And the way to kind of get at that is to look at synastries. Now, it's, it's actually really fun research because um, I'm looking across swaths of charts. It works kind of like a genome-wide association study. You look across swaths of charts and you're like, okay, higher probability of a nose. There you go. Right. And then you look across um, not swaths of charts, but s these swaths of like words and descriptions that came from the charts. And you can triangulate and essentially it gives you the asteroid of such and such. Atif Javed is, it, is close to the asteroid of your children that I have found so far. So I'm interpreting 21,000 asteroids. It's going to take a couple of years. I'm on asteroid number 8,300 something. As of Laurentia, I had done something like 1,100 asteroids translated. Uh, that was my book, Laurentia. But now uh, I've done over 8,000 of them. And it's taken nine months. It's like a really long uh, effort. But these were the text mines from articles that, that um, kind of just you know, the 45,000 people. Um, and these were the, the p-values, the statistical significance for Kuzquan Wallace and logistic regression and Man Whitney U on whether they had certain traits or didn't. And I kind of found out this morning by using stacked synastries that I should look in my Scorpio 5s, that's 17.5 to 20 degrees Scorpio for stuff in my chart, which showed my books. I basically, what I did is I used my my, uh, what's his face? My, uh, this, um, stack synastry to put in the books that I've written, which are essentially my kids. Cause I don't 
I don't want actual kids. Um, so eight of these went out. And then you just trace lines. See right here? All three of these charts seem to have something in Aries 7 or 8. And all three of the charts also seem to have something in Virgo 3. And that tells you about what you, as the investigator, are looking for. It does not tell you it, it does not tell you what you're going to find. It tells you where you, as the person asking the question, have consistently found things in others' charts. You're the person doing the research. You load in the 10 charts. You see the stacked planets. Those planets were significant to you in the sense that they caused you to put those 10 charts in there. So you'll look at your asteroids for... Um, patterns in other people's charts. And so that means you need all, however many thousands of your own asteroids, right? And what you're essentially saying is, here is my array of uh, attention grabbers. These are the things that grab my attention across the charts I'm looking at. I'll look in my own chart for the asteroid which explains these things. When I did that with my books, I found that they all lined up, not all, but most of them lined up in Scorpio 5. And so I looked in my own Scorpio 5 and filtered it in, that's the 53s, and I did a control F and searched for the word child, well, child dot star, and I found child birth. This is the only one there. To confirm that this one that this asteroid, Atif Javed, 28376, actually does tell me about children, I then looked in the stacks industries of other people's charts, most notably my mom and my dad. Now, this gets us to what kind of children will I have? Again, astro astrology is not going to tell you that, um, but it will tell you what kinds of potentials you can um, uh, pay attention to. What you're looking for are three families of, uh, of aspects. You're looking for easy to apply, which I call the hot aspects, conjuncts, oppositions, trines, and sextiles. Easy to apply. You need to look for all four. Okay. This is just like, it was one of those things that I was, uh, it, it took a while for me to kind of figure out, um, when you're trying to see if a characteristic is likely to be expressed, I highly discourage just thinking you're going to find it in a conjunct or in the trines. No. And that's because depending on culture or depending on situation, conjuncts that are always on may need to be forcibly turned off. Trines, which are always on your mind, may not be actually applied. Sextiles, which are applied in work and daily doings, may not be used if you're not doing anything, but you're lounging and thinking about something instead. So if you want to cover all the occasions for expressing a planet and, and make sure that it's in there somewhere, trines, sextiles, oppositions for comparing against, or conjuncts, all four. All four, okay? So if you only look at trines, you, you may be missing out, okay? Then there's tense aspects. Difficulty applying it. Squares and octiles. Octiles are the sesquiquadrate and the semi-square. 45 degrees and 135 degrees and 90 degrees. Those basically chop the, the energies into fourths and eighths and things like that, powers of two. Those typically mean that something is being cut in half and needs to be shared between what is and what isn't. Lastly, there are aspirational aspects. The in conjuncts and the semi-sextiles, which I just grouped together as in conjuncts. Um, those things are 30 degrees and 150 degrees. And if you have them to your planet, and in this case it's Atif Javed, then it tells you something about the easy um, affinities with your children. Here in my mom's chart, she has Atif Javed, conjunct Mercury, and trine Ranavskaya. Um, which suggests that her children are going to have this logical characteristic and they're going to have this kind of self-possession, which we do. Um, also, there is a square to Jupiter. See this, uh, 
this uh, square here basically says that there's going to be some kind of ongoing, not struggle, but journey. Um, could be struggle, though. For most people, it is squares. Uh, to to project one's image in the world, and I can tell you that all three of us brothers, again, I mean, you can just find us uh, online. We're all online in some way, um, all doing public image, all doing projection, all using logic, and all self possessed, right? So that's all I'm seeing in here. Um, I don't, I don't really, I don't know why this thing appears to be marked as a as a sextile. I don't think it's an actual sextile. It might be something else. But uh, anyway, these are major aspects to mom's Atif Javed. And if she asked what kind of children she'd have, that's what you would read. You have square Jupiter, a conjunct to Mercury, and a trine to of Sky. By the way, let me just remind you. Well, actually, I don't know if I ever posted this. I use a new collection of majors. Okay, so you're used to, in astrology, doing things like sun to moon, and it goes all the way through Mars and Venus and stuff. And then it, it includes Uranus, Neptune. Pluto, Saturn, right? Those guys, if you're studying personal qualities that can be scrambled and ran, basically randomized uh, within a single generation, within a single generation, you can't really use stuff past Jupiter. As far as if you just kind of look at how long, the number of years between people having children, right? Uh, the oldest versus the youngest. Most of that stuff is going to occur on cycles of under 12 years or something like that. And when you include Saturn as a way of looking at your kid's sense of control, you're actually, it's 29 years, right? You're looking at a generational pattern of control. It's not really kind of personally, you know. So instead of using Saturn, I use a, uh, an asteroid called Glasgow. And I don't, I don't know that I have Glasgow up here because I actually sometimes do use Saturn for different things. But you'll notice that I don't have Uranus here. How does my kid handle social talk and social pressure? Should I use Uranus? I don't think so. Uh, Uranus will tell you how they handle the generations version of it. But if you want their own personal intake of information, then there is an asteroid called Ariel Haas that I use. And this is Ariel Haas right here. Um, how does my kid handle spiritual stuff or you know do i use neptune uh, well that would describe generational spiritual experience the, the zeitgeist right the the, the 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 phones and the dot coms and the you know stuff like that those are big patterns and they're not really exclusive to your kids if you want to know your kids version of spirituality then you'll use something like earjo y r j o and there's earjo right there Self-possession, Ranavskaya, that's essentially the, the, quote, ruler of Taurus on the personal level. And Lindsley is the equivalent of Pluto. And then there's an asteroid called Ali Hewlett, which is essentially kind of a ruler of Gemini. Okay. I would suggest putting those, Glasgow, Lindsley, Ali Hewlett, Ariel Haas, Ranavskaya, and Irjo in your chart with your regular stuff so you can answer actual questions about your kids on a personal level, right? Not on a generational level. Um, by the way, this stuff is not just pulled out of the air. It's, it's based on stats. Um, but anyway, it would take forever to explain those individual planets significant. So I'm just going to go ahead and just tell you to put them in there. So anyways, dad's chart, has uh, Atif Javed here in Libra 11 suggesting that his kids have kind of a conversational quality dealing with information, true facts, if you kind of see my brother's work. Um, but in his chart here, there's a trine to Venus for a kind of charisma, but also the midheaven, a public reputation. And it appears that that's most of what we have. I mean, you could say there's a sex out to the moon for kind of an emotionality maybe. Maybe. Ah, oh, look at this. Wow, this is interesting. I didn't even see this. Irjo for spirituality and Ranavskaya again for self-possession. And this is opposite Atif Javed. And so we're going to probably do things against uh, the realm of illusion. Um, uh, my youngest brother is in music, in the music industry. And my middle brother is uh, just a wholesale creator. So uh, 
and and we're all online but but yeah this seems to be a property of dad's chart dad was a dj by the way so him having irjo ronovskaya ariel haas trine venus on the midheaven and i'm oh, sorry sextile venus on the midheaven and then sextile ish to uh, the moon and mercury and then we're just kind of in there too <laughs> as part of that whole thing we definitely inherited it looking at these as aspects these angles tells us something about the shared properties of both kids if mom came up to me and said what kind of kids would i have i'd be i don't know who's the dad right and this is part of it but you have to know the partner as well oh here's dad dad comes up to me and says what kind of kids would i have i don't know who's mom so you want both from um you want it from both charts and i'll also add that there's some information that you're not going to get until you actually do the parenting so schools that the, the kid goes to are going to have their own energy and they're going to dial up their own values right my schools were like they were like you know backup parents to me though my schools were like hardcore in terms of how i came out as a person and there's stuff that is in those places that is not going to be in my mom and my dad's chart so my Taurus 10 specifically is like there's nothing in Taurus 10 that's major in here or in here but i mean it was it was really formative so you know there's some there's some things that you're not going to be able to answer about what kind of kids you have um but anyways uh this is kind of a way to start answering that question and w w one thing that i'll, I'll kind of note um is that you can see difficulties so i mean it was interesting pulling up my mom and my dad's chart because i put my own chart in there too in the stack industry that's what you were seeing down here in uh nine this is actually my mom and my dad's and my chart uh this one is mine this one here it's got the sun and scorpio there but um uh, my atif javed is sitting right there in scorpio 5 the 53s it does not have major aspects to it um and if i if i were to go into my say um research area here and take a look at i think it's this is it this one no it's not it's not that i think it's this one ah here it is okay so so if i were to look at this then you could see that let's see, there we go atif javed now, now look at this right i have semi squared sesquiquadrant oh no sorry that's ariel haas never mind but uh here's mom and dad have all this stuff to atif javed as parents and i don't have anything <laughs> right so th what that means by the way is there may not be a like a major push like like an expressive push towards having kids like do you have this parental urge i do not and uh this th this not having um uh, atif javed with anything major for me um uh, basically says that much about human kids uh, I, I mean, I don't hate kids, <laughs> but I have no plans, bro, have, and have never had any plans. Um, but this is the kind of stuff that you look for, because you see that I'm using these uh, these uh, easy slash hot aspects, and then we've got an aspirational one here, and then we've got a tense one here as well. Find this in uh, your chart if you want to know what kind of kids you're going to have and if you're having difficulty with your kids by the way and i'm not going to say if you know enough astrology but it's, it's kind of like that if you're having difficulty with your kids and you'd really like to dial something up or dial something down you can totally use your kids as a science experiment and uh kind of kind of cheat the system <laughs> hook them up with things that dial up certain characteristics in their chart it's not necessarily people especially choice of schools and and places to live right um like if you have like a book or something that you happen to have the birth child, i don't know man 
So lots of ways to, to kind of turn up factors in the chart if you if you're really trying to trying to work with these kids. But uh, it's kind of neat. There's uh, some some neat neat research going on. I, I'll also uh, kind of tell you that I don't know if I showed this in this recording, but one of the things I'm looking at is uh, um, trines and squares and stuff to it in the form of group by counts. So if I have a planet in Virgo.Gemini, I don't just want to know if there's a planet there. I want to know if there's a planet in um, Capricorn.Gemini or Sagittarius.Gemini or something like that. And then they pile up um, to reinforce this particular section of the chart. So it has to be looked at holistically and it has to be done um, keeping in mind that no chart is going to determine your characteristics. It's going to be helped in providing options for your, yours or your kids' characteristics, but you really want key synastries for the things that your kids interact with in order to see um, what's really going on there.